Hey everybody, and welcome to this special announcement. I am Greg Avola, founder. I'm super excited to be here with us today. We got some amazing news that we want to share with you. But first, just want to reflect on Untapped. We're reaching 10 years in October. October 22nd is our 10th anniversary. It's amazing to be part of this company, this project, this theme throughout the entire 10 years. It's been a dream come true for me. And it's all really possible because of you, the community out there. So we thought about ways that we wanted to kind of celebrate 10 years here. We wanted to go big and we wanted to find ways to reach new people all over the world. Obviously in our current situation that we're in, we typically have anniversary parties on some areas of the East Coast, but we want to celebrate the entire untapped community. This small idea that was hatched in pretty much my parents' basement to where it is today, over 9 million users and close to 925 million check-ins. We want to celebrate you, the, the, the customer, the user, the community. So we've worked with a lot of great people in the past with Untapped. And when we talk about our 10th anniversary, we were approached by none other than Sam from Dog I'm going to bring him onto the screen here. Hey, Sam, how are you? Hey, Greg. Happy 10th. Thank you very much. So we're super excited here. And you, know, you approached us with the idea of trying to do something special for the 10th anniversary, which is part of our special announcement here. So I'm super excited to announce that we're going to be doing a partnership with Dogfish Shed to have a brand new collaboration beer that was going to be going out there. It's called I Remember My First Check-In, and it's going to be a sour beer, believe it or not. Sam, take us through the process here of how this all came together. You know, you talking with us, try to get this together for this large community project. Yeah, well, I mean, as you mentioned, it's been awesome to watch the growth of the untapped community. And you guys are celebrating your 10th. We're celebrating our 25th. And we're certainly two very grassroots oriented brands that value the dialogue with our consumer base, especially, you know, through the interwebs. And at this moment in the COVID crisis, when it's hard to feel connected with our community, uh, we thought this would be a super uh, cool moment to kind of think globally, but act locally. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we want to recognize just how um, collaborative, altruistic and mutually supportive the craft brewing industry is uh, around the world and how connected we are to our local tawar, the ground on which our ingredients grow. So basically, you know, I, I just reached out to you and said, hey, let's, you know, we know brewers are, are navigating this, this tumultuous moment and are different moments of navigating it in different parts of the world. I know I feel dislocated from so many of my brewer friends around the world in this pandemic. Let's think of some way that we can not only bring ourselves together as a global community of craft brewers, but remind the, the beer lovers who love what we make, how connected we are to our local communities of growers and farmers who make the ingredients. Cause it's going to be that whole collective that helps the economy get back uh, up to speed globally as they engage in commerce and sales and enjoying the beers they love uh, locally. So my, my ask to you is, hey, we partnered on badges and stuff in the, in the past and had a blast. Let's partner on something where we actually, you know, jujitsu style, use the power of, of <laughs> all of your, all, all of the folks that, that, that check in to, to vet the data and use your mm. superpowers of being a data, data, data vetting madman to say, let's just <laughs> discount the IPA style. Cause we know, we know that's ubiquitous. But right. let's dig into the data on Untapped and say, what is the most exciting beer style bubbling up from this community outside of IPAs? Yeah, and it's great. Uh, you know, we'll talk about the data in a little bit, but I wanted to show uh, our can artwork. Our design actually team came up with an amazing design for this. I'm going to show you the can now. This is going to be the the the, the picture of how this is going to look like uh, for all the all the beers. And we talked a little bit about how this project is going to be from Dogfish Head to the base recipe there. But the best part about this too is it's, it's a project that any brewer out there can get involved with. Uh, similar to other projects in the past, you'll be able to take the recipe and make your own and uh, be able to can this and, and bring it out, not just in the in the U.S. area, but all over the world. We're hoping that we can spread to the community out there. So this is a, a quick design of the uh, of the, let, the cable, uh, the artwork can. And uh, we were really excited about this design team. Did a great job putting this all together. But more about the data. Obviously, Sam, you talked about the fact that we kind of discluded IPAs here, discluded kind of the pastry stouts, the, you know, all the other things of that nature. You know, what we found looking at the data is over the last 10 years of data, the sour style is the most increasingly popular style over any other style on the market over the last 10 years with around a 72% positivity rate, not just on ratings, but on the actual uh, comments that are actually uh, 
provided in the check-in. So the analysis of that data from that perspective. And on top of that, um, it's just it, it, it's a style that is taking everybody by storm. It, you know, it, it's hi almost highly rated style outside of those IPAs that we mentioned before, with around a 4.0 rating overall for the last 10 years. So we were blown away. You know, we talked about this, Sam, prior, and I was like, okay, you know, what, what style should we do? And you're like, let the data speak for itself. Himself, let, let the data show what style we should do. So that's exactly what we we came together with in, in this front. And it's really exciting to be able to to launch this product, not just with you and you being so helpful with getting this out there, but also all the breweries out there that can come together and make this beer for the community. That's what we're all about with this situation here. It's a community driven product. We wouldn't be here without you. In the same way for you, uh, Sam, with with your fans and your group, is that they really drive the kind of connection there. So we're really excited about uh, talking about this sour ale style. Yeah, and you know, I I I I certainly didn't want to lead the witness. I, I said, you know, you, you vet your data, let us know where yeah. it comes. But we were pretty psyched when the data came back to say sours because Dogfish has been focused on doing sours for almost two decades. And I remember when we started doing Festina uh, Pesh the first time, like almost two decades ago, we sent it out for distribution, and like a quarter of it got sent back to our brewery where distributors were like, "Hey, <laughs> asshole, your beer went sour." <laughs> We meant to do that, and you know, and and you can see how far that the 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 pendulum has swung on recognition and excitement for for sours just in the last ten years since Untapped uh, opened. And you know, I vetted the data not in in Untapped the way you did, but with IRI, just looking at, and that's the group that tells you at at retail what what's going on. And similarly to what you found of 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 the user community. And untapped in the IRI database year to date, you know, through, through now this year, IPAs are up about 20% off premise mm -hmm. since the restaurants aren't closed. I'm just looking at off, off premise, which means grocery stores, liquor stores, convenience mm -hmm. stores. Uh, IPAs are up about 20% year to date and sours are up 76% year to date, wow. obviously on a much slower base than IPA. Uh, but right. it's really exciting. Uh, you know, Dogfish, we're proud that Sequench is the best-selling sour in America. But we're also just so pumped that anytime pre-COVID we would visit different cities and towns, we mm -hmm. would just find almost every super cool brewery experimenting and kind of putting their own unique creative thumbprint, you know, on the sour style. Uh, and I think that's what this project's really going to celebrate is how we all start on this sim similar base recipe and then watching everyone around the globe let their freak flag fly in whatever direction they want with that recipe is what I'm most excited for. So while we're yeah. proud to be partnered to get this off the ground, I think of this as an equal partnership between every brewery who's, uh, who's participating in it. Absolutely. And I'm going to show on the screen now, this is our, our new uh, landing page website for uh, Untapped TV, uh, our Untapped 10th anniversary. You can find it at Untapped dot com slash 10 that's one zero on there so we're going to be having a lot of crazy things here the recipe obviously you can go in there and grab the recipe we've talked about the label artwork as well and this is not just for commercial breweries if you're a home brewer out there and you want to make this as well go right ahead we want to have as much collaboration as possible with all the breweries out there to make this particular beer you know we get a lot of comments from the community out there about us being very u.s focused which is a true we're a u.s company perspective but we want to make this party in this 10th anniversary an opportunity for as many people as possible to enjoy this as well. I think it's really a testament to be able to see how far this can get out from a brew perspective there. So if you're interested in checking it out, go to untapped.com slash 10, that's one zero. You'll be able to kind of join the project here and be able to kind of submit your own brewery as a whole. Uh, and it'll be promoted on the untapped app from that perspective too. Also as well, want to highlight some of the participating breweries that we have right now are already signed up for this as well. And I'm going to actually put up a screen on the overlay here with all the great brewery names that have already kind of confirmed to actually make the beer itself. So we're really excited about that. Again, you can find this list at untapped.com slash 10 to see all the information that is, is in there as well. Now, of course, with all the amazing things that we're doing with this particular project, you know, we have to celebrate, right? That's the whole point about this whole anniversary is that, yes, this beer is amazing. It's going to be able to have that great aspect of being able to be uh, locally sourced. So 100 miles, we're asking breweries had an ingredient with 100 miles of their brewery and all these amazing projects from that perspective. But we have to celebrate. We have to have a party. And we can't do it in person because we want to be safe. 
So that also means that on October 24th, we're going to have a virtual worldwide party celebrating the 10th anniversary of Untapped. It's going to be on 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. We'll have more information for this at the bottom of the untapped.com slash 10 website, where you can find all that great information about where and when and how to attend. It's going to be virtual. Sam's going to be on there. He maybe didn't know that until I just told him, but now he knows <laughs> it's going to be on there. We're going to talk about all the brewers that are making some of these amazing beers from this, this project that we put together. Uh, it's going to be a great time from that perspective there. But the most important thing to realize if you're a brewer or you're a restaurant owner or a bar owner we can all celebrate together with this great occasion you know the brewers can make the beer the bars can actually have the beer in the locations and people can enjoy you by checking them in the other great part about this whole piece is that we're expecting all these releases of these beers to be out on October 18th. However, if you're a brewery and you can't fit that into your schedule, it's going to be for the entire year from that end of the year perspective. So if you want to release it in November, no problem at all, too. It's going to be a special badge on Untap, the 10th anniversary badge that you're going to get when you check into one of these amazing beers on there. So we're really excited about this. It's going to be pretty epic. Um, and uh, I, I really can't wait. We've been working on this for a little while, Sam. And long nights and, and trying to get this across the finish line. And uh, now we're here. So it's yeah. a very exciting moment. Yeah. I mean, God bless all the, our teams, lots of people at, at untapped and dogfish behind the scenes in the last few weeks have put this together. Greg, if you can go back to that list of brewers for a moment. Sure. Uh, uh, so, you know, we, what we did is we, as we started putting the concept together, I just said to gauge whether, you know, there would be excitement in the brewing community We've only thus far reached out to breweries that Dogfish has done collaborations with. The intention is to let any craft brewery around the world, and as Greg said, any home brewer around the world, uh, join this process. But it's pretty heartwarming that almost every uh, brewery that we reached out to of those we've uh, collaborated with are on board. You can see we already have uh, three continents uh, represented, and we literally have coast-to-coast -coast representation, and that's before today when, when now the announcement goes out to the broadest home brewing and craft brewing community globally with the invite to participate. And while we showed the, the label with the Dogfish logo on it, it's going to be so cool to see that label with all the different breweries' logos on it uh, around the, the world. So that's something I'm really excited about. And then you know, Greg, you showed that you're super easy to navigate page where, where people can click to learn about different components of this program and to just spend a minute on the recipe itself, mm -hmm. uh, maybe. So I want to give props to Mark Safrick, Dogfish Head's brewmaster, Brian Selders, our longest tenured brewer who runs our brewing program in Rehoboth. What we did was basically uh, the three of us just sat down and started uh, creating a recipe that was built around what we believe are accessible, easy to find core ingredients, giving brewers the options on how they sour their beers. Uh, but the ask is that we all follow a similar base recipe, but then we can talk maybe about the, the unique component, Greg, of asking people to, to go local with a creative component in that recipe. Yeah, we just we talk about the here and it's highlighted right here. Yeah, ultimately, we have the, the sour recipe that you can kind of download on our website. Again, that's untapped.com slash 1010. Uh, you can also, you know, what we're trying to encourage breweries to do is, is to have a an approach to look at this from a community aspect and to use local ingredients within 100 miles of your brewery location to kind of upstart from an economy perspective, you know, build this system of trust and build a system of community with our, our local farmers or, you know, uh, or, orchards or things that you want to add into the beer itself. So it's very important for us to kind of put that out there as a community project so that everyone can be involved with this, whether, you know, uh, from a, a facility to the, the, the packaging to everything else to come together. So you can download the recipe again there uh, and you can sign up uh, as well. We have all of our labels that we just talked about in case you joined us late. Uh, here's a uh, look at our labels that we're looking at for this beer. Uh, once again, as Sam mentioned, we're going to be every brewery will be able to make their own beer and we have labels you can download. You'll basically replace the Dogfish Head logo with your own brewery on there uh, and you'll keep this whole uh, holistic design that we think is really great because you know, when we pitched the idea of the I remember my first check in, we all laughed and giggled and said, hey, that's a great idea. Can we actually remember our first first check-in? I, I challenge all of you out there to see if you can remember your first check-in. And we'll have some cool things as we go throughout this week in the celebration for it to kind of showcase it. But very exciting stuff here on, on this front. Uh, and and, I, and I, I'm really excited to hear from the community aspect what they think about this product as a whole. Uh, and the, the best part, seeing a lot of comments coming in right now asking if the beer is going to be available in this market, in this market. And the greatest thing about this project as a whole is it, community-based. So, you know, Dogfish has making a, a, a beer for themselves uh, in their local area of Delaware. But 
if people staying in Texas and Oklahoma, the breweries over there can join the party as too. They can go to the website, sign up, get the recipe, and start brewing this beer. So, you know, this is a great way for us to be able to accommodate the entire community out there, get them involved with it, whether you're in Norway or anywhere else. We would love to have you have this beer uh, uh, made from a brewery. So let your local breweries know if they're not watching this right now and you're, you're in contact with them, let them know to go to untapped.com slash 10, that's one zero, and you'll be able to kind of sign up and we'll see that progress going forward. And like I mentioned earlier, as more and more breweries come on board, we'll be able to showcase more of them within the application and where to find them nearby. We have a lot of customers that use our untapped business products. We'll be able to showcase those products and where to buy them on a retail setting too. So the whole goal of this project, Sam, like you mentioned, is to encompass the entire brewing community, not just the social aspect that we're doing, not just the breweries, but the community, the makers, and everybody else involved. And I'm excited for it. Yeah, and I, and I just think it's going to be such an awesome moment of like, hyper global and hyper local and i love the the choice that you guys the untapped team made of calling the beer uh, i remember my first check-in because it works on so many levels you know the actual yes. first check-in you made an untapped but it's also a reminder that so many of us joined uh, this this craft beer community for that sense of community we found something we loved and then we found other people that loved it and we we felt like we found our tribe and I know I personally, I bet a lot of people watching this and those that will participate in it, it's an anxious moment where we feel a little bit dislocated from whatever our communities are, our work community, our extended family community. So this is also a moment to check in with the community that we all fell in love with, which is sort of the global craft brewing community. And I can envision like, you know, on that list we, we show, there's there's three of us as Delaware breweries that are out there <laughs> doing in Revelation. So I can imagine beer lovers in coastal Delaware or Del Delmarva getting on their bike and biking to, to get their four packs of all these releases, you know, ahead of the big uh, live event on the 24th and uh, trading them if they, if one place runs out and sharing with each other. And I think this is just going to be a great way to amplify that uh, check-in, you know, awesomeness that is central to this this movement i also am really excited just to see the diversity of the choices brewers around the globe will make for their indigenous ingredient choice that has to have been grown without within 100 kilometers of their location like i was texting with my buddy garrett who owns maui brewing company and uh, spoiler alert i believe he's going to use local fresh hawaiian strawberries <laughs> and it got me thinking holy shit their strawberry season is like five months different than ours here so i'm excited yeah. to see what breweries in australia are going to be putting in breweries in the uk are going to be putting in for their indigenous ingredient and i know mm -hmm. untapped dogfish you know stone who's participating greg had a great question he's like well what's the is there a charitable component to this and yes you know greg you can talk a little bit about that from the untapped side and there's been so many critical and beautiful projects recently from black is beautiful to the awesome thing that um other half did in, in new york for the hospitality community during COVID. with this though we we made a decision to say look if a brewery wants to do some some uh you know some charitable component of this that's your own decision but our our mm -hmm. one big ask was that every brewery when they find their local ingredient from within 100 kilometers of their facility they pay market value to that that farmer that producer that maker that coffee roaster to buy that local ingredient and hopefully celebrate that exchange, that commercial exchange on their social media and make it part of their story. Because I think yeah. this is also a great reminder that right now every, every American lives within nine miles of a local brewery. We all know we're gonna have a challenging economy for years to come. So for beer lovers to see the, the, the recovery of the economy starts locally and one example of that is how local brewers can work with local producers to keep each other financially viable on a sustainable path as we all navigate this this moment globally together. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of chatter in the comment, uh, comments right now about uh, the charity aspect. You hit it on the head there. What Untapped is doing independently and not requiring any of the brewers to do this is that we're actually donating to two charities for this particular event. The first one is the Restaurant Strong Fund Foundation, which we've done for in the past from Sam Adams, uh, basically uh, helping displaced workers due to COVID. The next one is a really good one that just recently uh, got announced from Garrett Oliver. It's the Michael Jackson Foundation, and we're really excited about partnering and donating to that, that charity from that perspective. But it is something that Untapped is doing from our side we think it's important uh, definitely up to the brewers to say what they want to do like you mentioned but the really important part like you mentioned is just 
hundred mile radius from getting that local ingredients and celebrating those things there. That's kind of where, where we want to kind of focus our attention on. But, you know, again, we're, we're super excited about all these things that are happening with this, with this project. I mean, I've been drooling over the, 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 the badge artwork and the design artwork for a couple of days now. I want to show it again because I just can't stop looking at it in case you join us late. We'll show it again. This is the, the label that we're, we're looking to aim for all the breweries to be part of this particular pro project. Uh, we're super excited about it. And again, when you make this brewery from this beer from your brewery, you'll basically add your logo where the dog is and then add uh, any uh, add this particular label to your cans, whether it's in the small version or the, or the taller version. So very exciting stuff as I remember my first check-in. I see a lot of comments from people now in the chat uh, basically saying what their first check-in is, um, which is great. You have an app for that, so you can check it out and find out exactly where, where it is. But um, yeah, it's been an amazing project, and I look forward to seeing a lot of the breweries' innovation with this. Like you mentioned before, this is a base style recipe. Maybe, uh, Sam, talk a little bit about the two versions that you guys are going to be doing at your side, um, you know, from the, from the brew hub side, and then also from your main brewery in Milton. Yeah, sure. So, you know, to geek out for a moment on the recipe for the brewers that home brewers and, and brewers that are on today. You know, the, the beer specs is it's we're looking for 11, 12 Play-Doh beer. This is not we want it to be really sessionable and welcoming. You know what I love about the sour, especially the fruited sour session in, or style in general, is it's a great entry point for, you know, minerally Pinot Gris drinkers, margarita drinkers. Yes, yeah, sour beer drinkers, but because it's low in bitterness generally, it can really attract a much broader range of, of drinkers. So we wanted to keep it that way too. It's only the range we're saying is nine to 15 IBUs. So not super hoppy. Uh, we're looking like a, at, at a 3.2 to 3.6 pH, which is the acidity that you'd expect in a nice bright uh, sour. We're asking folks to focus mostly around two row barley as a base and wheat malt, kind of an equal uh, ratios. And then that's when things get interesting. We say uh, fruits and vegetables, our, our ask is that you fresh and locally source any choice that you make there and that it should be between zero and 20% of the fermentable sugars contributed uh, from a fruit if you choose that or a syrup or a honey or, you know, maple syrup, whatever, whatever you choose there. Hops, we just say however you like in order to meet the IBU tar target, use whatever hops you want. Herbs and spices, let your local freak flag fly. Uh, yeast choice, uh, brewer's choice, and then the souring method. We're just saying kettle sour with lactic acid producing bacteria. So you might be dumping yogurt in there. You might be uh, using acidified malt. You might be doing your over your overnight uh, mash. So we're giving brewers a ton of creative leeway, but we're just asking that the base recipe stay kind of uh, similar. And I mm -hmm. love in the logo on the can that you guys came up with that it even shows diversity of two liquids being clinked together as people yep. are checking in with each other. Because if you think of, you know, uh, you know, Maui making theirs with strawberries and, you know, ours, our, our Mark Safrick, our brewer Milton's, Milton's doing his with blackberries from Kingsbury Farm in Ridgely, Maryland. You know, obviously 100 kilometers from our brewery in Milton and lavender from Lavender Fields in, in Milton, Delaware, like two miles from our brewery. And then Brian Selders in Rehoboth is doing his with Pfeiffer Apple Cider in the, in the mix uh, from Camden, Wyoming, Delaware. And in both of ours, we're using uh, locally uh, grown and malted uh, barley from proximity malting down the road from us. But if you think of, you know, Brian's, which is going to be, you know, a cider beer hybrid, uh, and it's going to be very pale in color from the addition of that cider. And you contrast that to probably where Garrett's at Maui's is going to go, where it's going to have a beautiful pinkish hue from the strawberry. It's going to be great diversity of color in, in addition to, to flavor in all the beers that will be uh, brewed for this globally. Awesome. Well, it's been an amazing time talking to you, Sam. I know you got to jump. We got, we got, we got stuff to do. We got to get our, all of our, our marketing uh, groups on the, on the, on the, on the horn here and get everyone excited. But I just want to recap everyone for watching here. We're going to do an, an amazing project with Doc and we're honored that uh, they came to us to have this project done. I, I, I've been doing this for 10 years. It's, it's a very amazing experience to be part of a company for this long. As, as Sam knows, being part of Doc which had, it's all about the experiences that we surprise and delight our users. And we hope that this announcement today surprised and delights you as an untapped user in the community that we look at this project as a celebration of you and, and thanking you so much for all the support that you've given us and you know literally have changed my life from all, all, all walks of life in that perspective too so this is a great way to get 
brewed all over the country to be able to, to go in there, grab the recipe and brew it. Head over to untapped.com slash 10, that's one zero. You'll be able to grab the recipe, sign up to be part of this project. And then also we're gonna have a party to celebrate this on October 24th uh, at 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Head over to that page as well to get more information to RSVP. We'd love to see you. We're gonna have amazing guests on there. We're gonna have milestones when we hit viewer counts. I may even shave my head on the air. <laughs> Who knows? It may be crazy. So definitely check us out from that side. And Sam, I want to thank you and your team for all your hard work on this project and uh, really looking forward to what, what comes out of it. It's a pretty amazing thing to be able to, to be a part of it for so long and work with people like yourself uh, to push this forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. And, and this is my moment to just ask every home brewer, every craft brewer around the world, uh, and every beer lover, please be part of this. We know this is a challenging moment, but together we are heavy and let's all check into this project together and, and see how vibrant and dynamic we can make it around the world. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. And thank you everybody for watching. Once again, head over to untapped.com slash 10. That's one zero. I feel like I'm Steve Jobs announcing a brand new thing here. So this is the first time I've ever done that before, but thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you on the trail here and thank you for breweries participating. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.